This episode of News Dump is brought to you by Stamps.com and by Purple Mattress. Whoopsie Goldberg leads our entertainment Did news. Did I do that? For this week with a big old oopsie Goldberg mm-hmm. that fell right out of her mouth on a recent episode of ABC's The View, which has led the, to the actress being uh, suspended and has apparently caused a whole bunch of infighting and drama behind the scenes on the show. So what the hell happened and how did this former professional nun turn so evil? Well, as you're probably very sadly aware right now, uh, anti-Semitism is uh, on the rise again. Uh, Even recently, we've seen Nazi flags publicly waved at protests in Florida and Canada. And of course, the internet and all of social media is just a big breeding ground for anonymous anti-Semitism, whether intentionally malicious or just used as a shortcut to the most extreme shock value that a teenager can think of. Yeah, about once a month, I find an account on Twitter that I'm like, I have to report this. <laughs> I have no choice. This is terrible. This is awful. This yeah. is probably breaking laws in yeah. several European countries yeah. just by existing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, when The View had a segment about recent book bannings, and one of those books happened to be Mouse, a graphic novel about the Holocaust, the conversation got into the history of the Holocaust and why they think the hosts think that the book might have been banned. Yeah. Uh, so The View relies heavily on uh, you know off-the-cuff, unscripted conversations and... Sometimes that leads to hilarious moments, like when former co-host Sherry Shepard wasn't able to pinpoint whether or not the Earth was flat, and then a few months after that, claimed that Jesus Christ and Christianity predated ancient Greece. She was the best view host. <laughs> yeah, just a real, just a real jarhead of uh, knowledge. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so this format it also leads to moments uh, where the hosts say some extremely dumb shit that's actually offensive to an entire group of people, yeah. which is exactly what happened this week with Whoopsie Goldberg, who mm-hmm. who said that the Holocaust was just white people doing horrific things to other white people, and uh, I guess, therefore, the Holocaust was not about race. Yeah. Mm, citation, <laughs> citation needed. Whoopie. Yeah. Uh, and a, so, <laughs> a lot of the problems with her take on the subject have to do with how racism is perceived in America versus racism throughout the world and throughout time. American racism is pretty simple in a lot of people's minds. It's horrific, but in people's minds here, it's kind of simple because our country is so young and is so overwhelmingly defined by the actions of our forefathers when it came to the treatment of the Native Americans and uh, various slaves. So this is also coupled by the fact that our public education system tends to gloss over a lot of what actually happened, and it's now becoming somehow even more controversial to teach these subjects because of how divisive we've all become. Sounds like CRT to me. Uh, Whoopi blurted out that it was white people against white people when that's certainly not how Jewish people, especially during the fucking Holocaust, were defined. Nor was it how the Germans and Adolf Hitler saw them, because they saw them as a subhuman race of people yeah. and <laughs> used propaganda and racism to dehumanize and demonize them enough to the point that the Aryan race not only found it acceptable to exterminate them en masse, uh, they thought they were actually saving the world by doing it. The Nazis it. were so, like, racist to, to like, an insane, like, pseudoscientific degree that they had, they had, like, tier lists of, like, the qualities of certain white people. It's like, oh, like the English and the Americans, like, yeah, they might have a place in our global Nazi empire. The French, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And then like Slavs, absolutely not. Get them out of here. Mm-hmm. And of course, yeah, Jews at the bottom of the white tier list and then below them, uh, you know, black people. Uh, for, for some reason, the Japanese, like, they had a pretty decent spot in the tier list. They made a great deal with the Germans. Uh, but like the Chinese not and Southeast. It, it, anyway, it, it was it was racism. It, it was, was very racist. It was like the most speci- like well thought out, not well thought out, but like they put a lot of thought into their racism, way more than any uh, American probably ever has. Mm-hmm. So to say that it's not racism is uh, ahistorical. That's a that's a bold step. Yeah. And we'll be, you know, she cl- like the whole Americans see race as black or white or. Yeah. Yeah. She basically said that much uh, on a follow up apology tour that started with an appearance on the Stephen Colbert show, uh, where she just straight up said that because she's black, discussions about her race are very different for her and admits that she thinks of race as something she can see. Which that, that's okay. her opinion. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's her that's, experience. That's your subjective experience of that mm-hmm. and is, is very applicable to uh, the country you live in. Yeah. But we're talking about Europe in the 1930s and 40s. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. The, the, so what she said on Colbert, 
And and in, on the view, so, yeah. ostensibly to to, you know, wrap this up. Yeah. Apology accepted. It, yeah, it, yeah, it it only served to open up a whole other can of worms. She essentially just dug her hole deeper with the statement that she made on Colbert. So uh, none of the damage that she did was undone by the first round of apologies. Uh, instead of using this as a learning moment for the entire view audience, Whoopi was uh, she was suspended from the show for yeah. two weeks and ignited a very loud discussion throughout the media that. Uh, would you? Are you surprised? It completely misses the point. Again, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the discussion turned into whether or not Whippy Goldberg should be fired for what she said, or suspended for what she said, or, or suffer no consequences at all for what she said. Uh, instead of why her statement might be harmful, misinformed, or upsetting to people, uh, many of whose relatives, parents, grandparents, great grandparents are alive today and lived through these uh, these events. In yes. discussion. It really was not that Very long ago. Very few generations <laughs> removed. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, instead of leaning into the fact that what Whoopi said didn't seem malicious, just ignorant, Yeah. the discussion quickly devolved into another tedious argument about uh, cancel culture. Here we go. Where people argued over the severity of her punishment. And n nothing to do with what was said. Guys, even if it is a fucking six-week suspension, eight weeks, like, she's going to be fine. Yeah. But, Whoopi's going to be fine. Uh, but, the people, but people were like, Oh, well, they'll fire Roseanne, but not, and they'll just suspend Whoopi Goldberg. It's like, well, what Roseanne did was Roseanne malicious. Roseanne called a black woman a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Roseanne was malicious. What Whoopi said was ignorant. Although Roseanne, her version of the story, she's like, I didn't know the bitch was black. Yeah. And also she was on, uh, forget what pills she was taking or something, apparently. Oh, yeah, the sleeping pills. Yeah, yeah. They'll yeah. do it to you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, this whole thing had also completely diverted attention away from the extremely important topic that they were covering yeah, at before, the time. Before Whoopi Goldberg derailed the whole fucking thing. <laughs> she needs to read Mouse more than anyone. <laughs> all of this could be solved if they all just read the fucking book they were talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and the topic was, and this is happening right now, it's yeah. fucking wild. Uh, the people who are all about Stopping cancel culture uh, are canceling a whole lot of books right now. Yeah. Uh, really, there's an increasing rate at which public schools in this country are just banning books that cover topics that make some parents, typically the conservative ones, very upset because of naughty language and sex. That's what they say is causing... And the, also yeah. making me acknowledge that uh, white people have done some bad things in the past. And that gay people exist. Yeah. But no, it's definitely the cuss words that they say that I'm actually angry about. Yeah, so in the more majority of these book bans, the books are meticulously selected for their subject matter, but the reasons that are given by parents for the bans are typically related to uses of vulgar language or sexually explicit scenarios. There was an interview this week, I couldn't find it again after watching it, uh, but it was basically like, the, the person interviewing this woman was like, don't you think it's odd that all of these books specifically deal with LGBTQ rights uh, but you're saying huh. that it's all about like uh, naughty words in them. She's like, well, I don't, I didn't make that connection. Interesting. Yeah, we should but look into that. The, this is the case with Mouse. Uh, the, Mouse is a graphic novel about the Holocaust that also happens to include cuss words and nudity. But they're all mice. Animal nudity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, swearing and depictions of naked animals in a book about the fucking Holocaust. Surely there are no uh, ulterior motives at play here. Um, it's the same kind of excuses down the line as well. Banning books that contain LGBTQ characters in them for being sexually explicit. Banning classic pieces of literature because they contain coarse language. It's actual real cancel culture that's taking place while Tucker Carlson jerks off to the green M&M one last time before it loses its sex appeal. And yes, apparently the level of morality and justification for something being sexually explicit extends to our candy mascots, but not to literature. When you shorten the green M&M's heels or put Minnie Mouse in a pantsuit, that is destroying the fabric of America. But when you remove books from the curriculum or go as far as actually removing them from the library in some cases, it's fine because those books have sex scenes and naughty words in them. Yeah, is... I'm, I'm guessing Huckleberry Finn has, like, long been yeah, yeah, yeah. banned. From, it was like uh, Catcher in the Rye was one that was, like, uh, yeah. going the rounds of being banned again this time because of the N-word. I mean, Huck Finn is, like chock full of the n-word that is a yeah. book that i guess if you're probably gonna if a child's gonna read that they probably should get some background <laughs> a little bit yeah some context uh, would be nice but it, it's a very good book i mean that's uh mark twain probably the uh the most important author in american <laughs> history yeah yeah I, not for kids i guess but it it other than the uh extreme racism in it it's uh it actually is 
a pretty good book for children. <laughs> sure. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it's not just books with lesbians or ones that make students question authority that are feeling the burn right now. Uh, this latest push has also reignited the ultra psycho religious nuts to start burning shit like Harry Potter again. We're doing the 90s again. <laughs> it's hell yeah. It's great. Yeah, the early 2000s, the 90s, it is back, baby. And instead of Slayer albums, uh, not even that far, because that, that's Get like that dark sided yeah. shit out of my house. Yeah, just burning it all. So, yeah, right wing pastor and banned Twitter user Greg Locke, who was canceled from the platform for repeatedly spreading COVID misinformation, <laughs> has organized his flock for a good old fashioned book burning. Are we the baddies? <laughs> uh, the aim here is to destroy some wicked titles that have poisoned the minds of our youth. Titles like Harry Potter and Twilight. <laughs> what fucking decade does this guy think he's in? It's 2022. An, an, enti an entire, like, 15 year span has gone by, and this guy's like, have you seen this? Harry Potter's pretty popular. Both of these sagas have movie franchises that are like a, a decade, decade old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, all right, here's here's more from Newsweek. A Tennessee pastor held a witchcraft book burning where followers were encouraged to bring Harry Potter and Twilight books to hurl into the flames. <laughs> Global Vision Bible Church pastor Greg Locke and his followers carried out the burning in Mount Juliet near Nashville on Wednesday night, where items they associated with witchcraft were thrown into the fire. In a ranty sermon, Locke took aim at what he deemed were Masonic and occult influences in society. Whipping up his congregation, Locke said, Your witchcraft has to flee in the name of Jesus. He later said, We have a constitutional right and a biblical right to do what we're going to do tonight. We have a burn permit, but even without one, a church has a religious right to burn occultic materials that they deem are a threat to their religious rights and freedoms and belief system. Earlier this week, Locke encouraged his congregants to bring books, movies, and items that he considered to be connected to witchcraft. Bring all your Harry Potter stuff. Laugh all you will, haters. I don't care. It's witchcraft, 100%. All your Twilight books and movies, that mess is full of spells, demonism, shape-shifting, and occultism. Bring tarot cards, Ouija boards, healing crystals, idol statues, spell books, and everything else tied to the occult. It has got to go. If you think we're crazy, then scroll on. We're exposing the kingdom of darkness for what it is. It's time for people to be delivered. Where are they getting all this stuff? Uh, do, they, do this guy's followers, they have all this stuff at home? You, yeah, it's like, been gathering like, dust in their garage yeah, since the 1980s. Like, uh, a lot of the, the I don't stuff. imagine anyone who follows this guy has just had Harry Potter and Twilight shit just and in, the, in their garage for 20 years. Yeah. And they're like, oh, wait. Oh, yeah, it's evil? Because in the 90s and 80s, when the satanic panic was really taking off again, it was like they were taking these items from their children yeah. to burn them. And you would assume the children would be like, no, no, I want that album or I want that book to read. Gen but Z now, doesn't like Harry but, Potter. But yeah, everyone who owned Harry Potter in a legitimate sense they're to like read it for the first time years have old. kids of their own. <laughs> like they're not taking it from their children. They're like yeah. having to go out and buy new copies or buy used copies or being like, Hey, do you still have those Harry Potter books you read 15 years ago? Yeah. I, I'm going to a book burning, and I'm going to look like a real idiot if I don't show up with something to burn. Yeah. It's, it's like showing uh, up at a potluck, potluck without deviled eggs. Deviled eggs. <laughs> oh, bring those deviled eggs. We're burning those, I'm going to destroy these deviled eggs. <laughs> oh, they're there delicious. They go. <laughs> Into the fiery pits of my stomach. <laughs> oh, it's sinful. You can taste <laughs> how good they are. Mm. This is the greatest trick the devil <laughs> ever played. <laughs> So, yeah, I, as you can see, the United States is having a totally normal one right now. Yeah, we are. Uh, <laughs> we're on one. Yeah. But uh, let's circle back now to a few things. Uh, first and foremost, the news of these book bannings has actually had the opposite effect. Wouldn't you know it? Mm -hmm. Are you surprised that when people freak out about uh, books, those books suddenly start flying off the shelves? Yeah. Students have organized banned book clubs. Bookstores have put together banned book lists with sales and copies of these books. And in the case of Mouse, its sales have skyrocketed, putting it at the top of the Amazon bestsellers list and clearing out inventories at other storefronts. This book is 40 years old. The, the, the best part is like, it's so literally one year ago. I don't know if it was February, March, whatever, but almost an exact year ago, the exact opposite of this sort of opposite happened where they banned Dr. Seuss. So in this case, people are going out and buying like a fucking mouse and Catcher in the Rye and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in 1984. And a year ago, conservatives were like, that's it. I'm buying every copy of Green Eggs and Ham yeah. that I can get my hands on. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, 
I mean, at least with these books, they're for people over the age of five. Yes. Anyway. Also, we shouldn't have to reiterate this, but the Dr. Seuss company were the ones that took they those books off. Yeah, they, off they, the they were like, we don't feel comfortable. There's like, there's some stuff in these books that has not aged so well, so we're not going to sell them. Don't worry. It's a couple Dr. Seuss books that no one fucking cares about. Yeah. It's none of the big titles. You, could, you couldn't even you have would, named them you before. Literally, if we was, had just yeah. pulled this stuff from our store, Nobody would you would, no one would, would have noticed for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, yeah, so if you're watching and you're interested in a very clear list of all the books that are being banned over the past year or so, independent bookseller Powell's has an entire webpage dedicated to the updated banned books list, where you can purchase the books from them or just write them down and head down to your local public library, where you'll hopefully still be able to find them. Yeah. Uh, local public library. Not local public school library, though. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a little harder to find them there. But, yeah. Uh, there's some definite surprising ones on the on the banned book list, like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, Which I a... still haven't read, but I, my understanding is that that is a very inoffensive book. Yeah. Well, too bad. Sci-fi, occultism. Yeah. Um, so there you go. And I would venture to guess that at a couple of these school board meetings, just like with the anti-mask shit, there's probably people there screaming into the microphone that don't even have kids in that school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... I, I feel terrible for the younger generation. I honestly do. I have all the respect in the world for what they're having to deal with, with fucking COVID and other economic downturn, dealing with boomers at a young age, uh, student debt. Everything is working against them, and I feel terrible because millennials had it bad. I think Gen Z has it worse. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Gen Z does have more uh, access to niche communities True, information. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you were like gay in 2000, it was pretty bad. Yeah. If you're gay now or trans or whatever, like the internet is uh, is a, a better way to connect and feel less uh, isolated. Plus, if euphoria you is any uh, indication of how things are going. I feel like if you watch that, the government's watching. They're putting you on a list. Like, yeah. I, I, I was, I'm like, wait, these people are all supposed to be 17 and they're like fucking and sucking and like naked on and you see dicks i mean that's what being a teenager like, is like but yeah, yeah they but, do uh, show a lot of stuff in that show yeah yeah i was like oh a24 show and people are talking about it online cool yeah I, it's I, not I, a fun watch i yeah I, I don't know if i'll ever get into it but yeah just the concept and like zendaya does all it. the drugs yeah i'm just like i don't know this feels like this feels like uh sort of not like torture porn but like grief porn or something like that and then also like real porn yeah, that's in it too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have, I'm only like two episodes in and I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to keep watching this. It's kind of like bumming me out. Back to Yellowstone. A fantastic show. After I've got through the first season, oh my God, that second season, phenomenal. Wow. Totally. I'm going to go out and buy a cowboy hat right now. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Show is moving to Montana. Well, they don't want us. They don't want us coming. Yeah. I, well, you'll see they, what happens they, to the California. You see a California play. Two. You get your fucking tires popped out there. They are, <laughs> they are very hostile yeah. to you even look in their direction. Great show, though. You should definitely start watching it. You'd love it. Yeah. Just get, once you get to episode six in season one, then it takes off. Anyways, we do have some uh, more lighthearted news for you in just a second. But first, let's take a second to thank today's sponsors, starting with stamps.com. And we're all hoping to have more free time to do things this year, hopefully. And if you're a small business owner, you're busy enough as it is. You don't have time to deal with the hassle of going down to the post office. With Stamps.com, you can skip that trip and never waste another dollar or minute. Stamps.com lets you print official postage right from your computer, so you can spend less time at the post office and more time running that business. Stamps.com saves you time, money, and stress. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services that you need right from your computer. And you get discounts that you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. Whether you're an office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop, or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com will make your life easier. All you need is a computer and standard printer. No special supplies or equipment. You're up and running in minutes, printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. Save time and money this year with Stamps.com. Sign up with promo code NEWSDUMP for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code NEWSDUMP. This episode is also sponsored by PURP. Mm. Purple's goal is to make sure you're getting the best night's sleep possible. 
These days, there are no shortage of gimmicks out there that promise a great night's sleep. I don't care what kind of toppers there are or how heavy a blanket may be, it is lipstick on a pig. If you're sleeping on a terrible mattress, your sleep's gonna be terrible. It's that simple. That's why we recommend sleeping on a purple mattress. That's because only purple mattresses have the Gel Flex Grid. It's a super stretchy, ultra squishy material that adapts and flexes around pressure points and doesn't retain heat. This Gel Flex Grid is amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hip, no matter how you sleep. Unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, thanks to the Gel Flex Grid, purple mattresses bounce back as you move and shift. You'll never have that I'm stuck feeling that people get with memory foam. And getting my purple mattress, it was like night and day. The first time I sat on it, it was like, oh my God. The first time oh you lay down on it, it is an experience. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it is genuinely the most comfortable mattress I have ever slept on. I sleep great. No neck problems, no back problems. I got my purple pillow as well. Yeah, uh, I wake up feeling... Very well rested. Might I recommend, I, I've been doing great with sleep lately. Uh, the other thing that I would add to this is uh, getting a, 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 a account for your local PBS station and putting on any of the wonderful Ken Burns documentaries oh, yeah. when you're winding down for the night because even if the topic is very interesting, 10 yeah. minutes You'll of that out. soothing voice. You'll be out with your purple mattress and your Ken Burns. Yep. Try your purple mattress risk-free with free shippings and returns. Financing is available too. Getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash news dump and use code news dump. For a limited time, you can get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That is purple.com slash news dump, code news dump for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash news dump, promo code news dump. Terms, Terms apply. apply. All right, back into the news uh, with an inadvertently hilarious course of events that led to judges on a reality oh show God. reportedly walking off the set during a competition show because they were just <sighs> so offended by what they saw. Over the past two decades, across multiple different shows with dozens of gimmicks, what could possibly be so horrific that it caused the celebrity judges to finally say enough is enough? It had to be something pretty gross something wildly offensive or just plain evil. Well, it turns out it was all three. <laughs> because according to multiple sources, the judges of reality series The Masked Singer left the stage when the performer revealed themselves to be none other than former New York City mayor and Trump lackey, Rudolph Giuliani. Man, it must have been sweaty under that big old mask. Yeah, he <laughs> just oil coming straight yeah. down. So are we'll you wearing some sort it. of corpse paint makeup under there? What did he say? Uh, that so obviously the show hasn't aired yet. This is just like, from insider reporting. Start spreading the news. It's got to be some like New York song. Yeah. yeah. Luck be a lady tonight in New York. <laughs> concrete jungle where dreams are made of. There's nothing you can't do. They stole the election. <laughs> we some, had we had our suspicions. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. So I mean, yeah, you definitely fucked up in life if your presence alone is enough to offend Robin Thicke of all people, especially when yeah. you were once lauded as an American hero because you happened to be the mayor when 9-11 happened. That yeah. makes you a hero. <laughs> that makes you America's mayor. Yeah. What a fall from grace. What a dumb decision by the producers <laughs> to try and normalize Rudy Giuliani of all fucking people. Like, just a little over a year after his direct participation <laughs> In the election fraud scandal for which he is still currently being investigated. This is and this is a theme where people are just like, why are you doing this? They had uh, what was it? Uh, uh, so you think you can dance or something? I, one of those dance shows. Yeah, like and it was Sarah uh, Palin. No, no, oh, she was, was on uh, Mass Singer as well. It was uh, Sean Spicer. Yeah. After being fired from the Trump like administration, six months after being fired. very shot was weird. Doing the cha cha or something. It was like this is the guy that like literally lied. Like like. Everything he said was a fucking lie. Didn't he show up at like the Emmys too? Just yeah. like taking pictures like, hey, remember me? Yeah, hey. It's the guy that guy. lied to the entire country? Oh my God. Anyway, yeah, so this is, look, it's hilarious. <laughs> this, whole, <laughs> this whole thing's hilarious. Especially the fact that we're like hearing about it like a month or two before it's actually going to air. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's legitimately funny that this unmasking prompted such a disgusted response from the judges who've previously had to sit through other performances from people like Wendy Williams, Rob Gronkowski, Sarah Palin, Honey Boo Boo, and fucking Ninja. Yeah. They made it through all of those, but they couldn't make he it pulls through. pulls the mask and they're like, nope. <laughs> I mean, like, I, assuming they genuinely don't know who's in the suit, like, that would be, it was just like, it, this is being filmed. It's like, I don't know how to fucking react to this. This, yeah, is, this, very, this is upsetting. I fucking hate this guy. Yeah. I, believe, I, I feel deep this in my bones a, this that is this man is- This is a deeply bad person. <laughs> yeah. What am I, I supposed to do? 
It's probably better if I just leave the stage. Yeah, and so it was it was Robin Thicke, who has plenty of his own scandals, but also uh, Ken Jeong. So, yeah. <laughs> like, what do you want Ken Jeong to do? Yeah. Be like, hey, asshole, leave. I'm voting you off. You're a bad person who lied to the country. Yeah, I, did, I don't know what they thought was going to happen. It's America's mayor, Rudy Giuliani, who was there on 9-11, and I don't know what he's done since then, but uh, I can't remember. Here. I can't remember what he's done since then. He just yeah. he took all the porno places out of the Times Square, and he yep. stood on top of that rubble and said, we're coming together as a nation, as a city. And he took down the mafia. He took <laughs> yeah. down those Gambinos. Yeah. So. Hats off to you, Mr. Mayor. And the last 20 years are a blur. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's to say what, what he's been Now he's dressed lately. up in a panda suit. So, yeah, Rudy Giuliani was unmasked as an exiting costumed con- contestant in last week's taping of the first season seven episode of Fox's popular primetime series, The Masked Singer. Deadline hears that as soon as they saw Giuliani, judges Ken Jong and Robin Thicke quickly left the stage in protest. <laughs> the reaction to Giuliani was perhaps the most polarizing the show has seen since 2020. The Masked Singer faced criticism then when another controversial Republican politician, Sarah Palin, was unveiled as the bear. <laughs> Deadline here is that while Jong and Thick exited, they eventually returned, fellow judges Jenny McCarthy and Nicole Scherzinger remained on stage. Jenny McCarthy was like, I hate. Hey, I don't like the vaccines either. <laughs> Why is she a judge? Why isn't she a fucking pariah? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what, they're, they're clearly like okay with sitting next to fucking Jenny McCarthy, who yeah. has probably inadvertently been responsible for the deaths of children. Like, has Jenny McCarthy done anything in a professional career since 15 years ago when she just started doing the rounds as an anti-vaxxer on talk shows? Her agent needs a raise. Uh, But yeah, her being acceptable as a judge on this show is also very questionable. But it is funny, like... (laughs) They're like uh, the last like controversial thing is Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin had has had quite a couple couple of weeks. She went to New York, got COVID, and then uh, not only did not isolate or take any steps, she just did not change anything about her plans. She went out to restaurants every night. Went to some of the restaurants twice. Yeah. There, there, there was hey, like hey, last news. time you didn't know if I had COVID. I definitely have COVID this time. You saw the headlines, right? Anyways, I'm back. Yeah. And the people that ran the rest of the uh, restaurant were like, well, they, she came in with one of our, uh, you know, most important regulars. And so she was like, what are pack, we going to do? Packed into like SUVs with like six other passengers all unmasked. And reporters are like, are you worried about being in a car with her? She just tested positive. It's, it's in the news. And they're like, no comment. <laughs> all right. No comment. <laughs> Well, at least, you know, uh, they were doing more than... Uh, no, they weren't wearing uh, masks. No, oh, they weren't? Were, yeah. Oh, okay. That's, okay. A, that's a, like, what do you do? Okay, then they didn't do more than uh, our mayor, whose excuse of taking a, yeah, a, maskless, a maskless photo with Magic Johnson, which is like, yeah, I held my breath. So, uh, don't worry. Yeah. Guys, I'm moving to India in, like, <laughs> a couple weeks, and you'll never hear... Like, or just be again. honest. Be like, it's... I was in a... I was. I went to a big fucking football game, and I didn't feel like wearing the mask, and I feel like the risk is minimal to me. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, does it make me uh, look like probably a bad decision to do publicly as a uh, government official? Yeah, sure. But I did it anyway, and I'm going to own it. Instead, he's like, no, nah, I held my breath when I took a photo with people. And it's like, <laughs> there's multiple shots of them in the crowd throughout the game where they're not... It's like, okay, who cares at this point? Yeah. But if you're a fucking uh, official who's responsible for the mandates in the city where you're doing that, like, I don't know, maybe abide by your own rules. Yeah, just don't post the fucking picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, at least pretend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they think we're so stupid. Anyway, speaking of dumb TV news that crosses an especially weird line of affecting actual real-world events, we recently spoke, just as a side note, about Jeff Zucker in relation to a completely separate topic that we covered on the show. And we only brought it up because someone uh, recently online pointed out that Jeffrey Zucker had somehow handed, had his hands in everything that is at the very stupid forefront of American society in recent years. He hired Matt Lauer at the Today Show. Oops. He greenlit Fear Factor, bringing Joe Rogan into the households of millions. And he was behind the signing of Donald Trump as the main character of The Apprentice. And following all that, he became president of CNN just before the dumbest election in modern history, and also was in charge at a time where the network would give all of its airways over to Trump because he brought in massive ratings, sometimes broadcasting entire campaign rallies to their viewers, something that they wouldn't typically do yeah. when there's many other candidates in the race. Well, This guy's going to say something crazy. We want to make sure that... Don't worry, the he'll never get elected. It's just, it's a circus. 
Yeah. Anyway, no sooner had we uttered Jeffrey Zucker's name than uh, he, he went ahead and inadvertently made headlines all by himself when news broke that Zucker was involved in an office romance with a subordinate. And we're not here to balance the ethics of inter-office romances. We understand that in the real world, relationships can and do develop at work because that's where you spend a majority of your time as an adult. Now, of course, the waters get a hell of a lot murkier when someone is in a position of power over the other and uh, sparks up a romance with someone who's beneath them. But typically, there is usually a process in most workplaces where you just you acknowledge relationships, report them to HR, and that's it. You move on. Yeah. Zucker did not do this. And the relationship between him and CNN's executive vice president and chief marketing officer, Allison Golist, had remained a secret. So and that's a big niche niche. Yeah. <laughs> so when this news became public, ironically, as a result of the company's investigation into former CNN anchor Chris Cuomo, it was bad optics. Bad optics for the brand. And Jeffrey Zucker quickly resigned from his position as this president. This is what takes him down. That's, uh, yeah. But uh, if you want to get a little more scandalous with it, uh, there are reports from sources inside the network that say the revelation of Zucker's relationship was revenge by Chris Cuomo for <laughs> getting fired uh, from Insider. In a memo, Zucker said he was asked about his relationship during an investigation into Cuomo, who was fired from the network in December after it emerged he had privately helped his brother, then New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, navigate a sexual harassment scandal. Quote, Notice Zucker mentioned how this came from the Cuomo investigation, one senior CNN staffer told the Daily Beast after Zucker's announcement. People think this is clearly Cuomo dragging down Zucker on his way out. The New York Times cited two anonymous people briefed on the matter as saying that Cuomo's legal team flagged Zucker's romantic relationship in discussions with Warner Media lawyers. I love that. Petty all the oh, way down. Oh, you're going to take me down? You're going to take down Chris? They already took down the, the other Cuomo. You're trying to take down the Cuomo brothers? Yeah. Well, the Cuomos don't forget. I am eagerly awaiting Chris Cuomo's appearance in The Masked Singer. Yeah. Yeah. And Andrew Cuomo. It's like a two-headed beast. Yes. <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be great to see. They're going to be, like, uh, dressed up, and they're going to have one, like, uh, uh, instrument between them. They're both playing with different hands. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. anyway, and then Ken Jong is going to storm off the set. Or actually, Jenny McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, enough of all that shit. Let's talk about Harambe, I guess, because everything's a fucking rerun now. Yep. Harambe, arguably the most got... And I'm sorry, guys. I, I explained this in a comment the other day, but the toilets in this <laughs> terrible building... Anytime anyone in one of the hundred units here flushes a toilet, it sounds like a car just crashed into the side of the wall. So that's the fucking crashing sound you hear every 15 fucking seconds. I try to edit around it. It's it, it, we Sometimes we'll retake it. Other times I'll try to edit the bang out. Yeah. But uh, look, I'm not, a, you know. I'm not a plumber. I don't know why uh, flushing a toilet would cause violent, explosive sounds to happen that <laughs> reverberate through an entire office building. There it goes. Yes. It's happening again. <laughs> Someone had Chipotle for lunch. Uh, this was not revealed. This was not <laughs> apparent to us before we signed the lease. But uh, yeah, they were like, uh, make sure no one uses the bathroom while yeah. these guys are checking out the space. Anyway, what were we talking about again? Harambe. Oh, yeah. Harambe. 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 Yeah. So yeah, obviously the most famous gorilla in the world after being shot to death in his enclosure at the Cincinnati Zoo after some idiot kid fell inside. Mm -hmm. well, Harambe clearly did nothing wrong. And at the time that he was gunned down, appeared to be protecting the child. Yeah. And I believe in my heart that he was. Harambe would quickly become an internet icon, somehow outlasting nearly every other meme and reappearing every couple months in various form. Like when everyone started shouting dicks out for Harambe, uh, that was that was cool. And uh, or like for more than a handful of people, they, they voted for Harambe as a write in candidate for 2016 and 2020. <laughs> yeah. Or when a Cheeto that was shaped like Harambe sold for nearly one hundred thousand dollars. Look, at least you better can than the that Cheeto. Cheeto in the White House. Am I right? <laughs> hey, Kofefe. Well, uh, Harambe continues to live on in all of our lives, and this time he's been brought back into the news cycle once again by a player for the Cincinnati Bengals who has dedicated their performance in the upcoming Super Bowl to Harambe. I mean, yeah, I guess these wounds the, at the local level are probably still pretty raw. Yeah, Cincinnati, of course, being, as we just mentioned, where Harambe both lived and died. Uh, appearing on a recent podcast, Bengals defensive end and Ohio native Sam Hubbard was asked about any dedication to the famed gorilla in the locker room. And here's what he said. Sweet Prince. I mean, that's our guy. That's our hero. I think that's known. Kind of goes without saying. You know, we're doing this for him. And uh, the statement, just starting with, like, Sweet Prince, is just like, man, I am so fucking old that, like, the the people competing in the Super Bowl, I am, like, a decade or more older than them now. 
It is pretty weird. Yeah. Like uh, Aaron Rodgers. That's Aaron, why we're going to miss Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers looks like he's like 45, but he is actually like one year older than me. And mm. learning that made me feel very strange. Yeah. Yep. Uh, anyways, uh, though uh, we are clearly rooting for the Rams to win in the Super Bowl, we'll at least have a little bit of solace knowing that if the Bengals do win, Harambe will be up in heaven smiling down on all of us. And if the Bengals don't win, I'd hate to be a young angel in close proximity to this powerful beast. Because he is going to rip someone limb from limb. Yeah. Justice will finally be served in heaven. Anyway, finally today, for a little more info on just how bad of a bloodbath Facebook faced this week, or meta, yeah. uh, regarding their daily active users and general investor confidence in this massive tech brand. Uh, it's even worse than we expected. And has, it has resulted in Meta, which is now technically the name of Facebook, suffering the largest one-day wipeout in US corporate history. <laughs> 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 its valuation slumped by nearly $240 billion. So <sighs> that's a lot. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. What, a, what a record to hold. Move fast and break things. Yeah. Uh, here's Insider with more. After markets closed on Wednesday, Meta, formerly known as Facebook, said in its fourth quarter earnings report that Facebook's daily active user base shrank for the first time in its history. Meta also reported $10 billion in operating losses from its nascent metaverse business. As we alluded to yesterday, Facebook is blaming a lot of their revenue problems on Apple for launching the ability uh, for its users to no longer be tracked. Uh, here's CNBC with more on that. Facebook parent Meta said on Wednesday that the privacy change Apple made to its iOS operating system last year will decrease the social media company's sales this year by about $10 billion. Quote, we believe the impact of iOS overall is a headwind on our business in 2022, Meta CFO Dave Weiner. I'll say Weiner. I think it's Weiner. But Dave Weiner said on a call with analysts after the company's fourth quarter earnings report, it's on the order of $10 billion, so it's a pretty significant headwind for our business. That's a shame. Yeah, real shame. I would hate to see anything bad happen to Facebook, a company that has been just perfect in regards to privacy and the general well-being of the world. Couldn't have happened to a nicer company. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Anyways, uh, if you haven't had enough of us yet, please watch our most recent episodes. We got a tech news day over here that has plenty of dumb mockery of NFTs. No fucking thanks. That's what Kanye says. Yeah. And that's what I say. Also, uh, we have an episode about uh, Sony buying uh, uh, Bungie, and apparently there's more about that too, because apparently Sony spent a lot on that, and uh, even Nintendo came out and they're like, oh, we want nothing to do with this big acquisition Leave thing. us out of this turf war. Yeah. We're Nintendo, we do our own thing. So uh, there you go. Um, check both of those out, subscribe to the channel, follow us on TikTok, and uh, we'll see you soon for Weekly Weird News. Bye-bye.